Welcome to Professor Sutton, uh, from Imperial College London and to Professor Boon Lim, clinical lead for the uh, Imperial Syncope Unit at Hammersmith Hospital, both members of STARS Medical Advisory Committee. Thank you for joining and for being available for patients. Good morning, Trudy. Thank you for having us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We've uh, explored the various diagnosis options, but the one thing we didn't look into was tilt testing. And I wonder, Professor Sutton, if you could explain what is a tilt test and how it helps to diagnose syncope, please. Thank you, Trudy. Uh, tilt testing uh, originated for the purpose of diagnosis of syncope in my lab in the middle of the 1980s. We came across it rather serendipitously. So shall we say we stumbled into it. And what it is, is a provocative test. It is reproducing the uh, upright posture because the patient is head up, tilted to 60 to 80 degrees so not quite standing up, but uh, head up high, uh, feet low. And uh, this is the position which many fainters faint. What tilt testing, where tilt testing differs from standing up is that it's not sufficiently high to employ the muscles of the legs, which act as a, as a pump to push the blood back to the heart. So these are relaxed on the tilt table, where if the, the person was standing up, they wouldn't be relaxed. And so it, it, it's, it's a significant stress for the patient, um, physiological stress, should we say. And uh, if it's prolonged, then fainting can be induced. It is, however, mostly in the patients who faint when they're upright. And for patients who don't faint when they're upright, particularly maybe sight of blood, for example, they may not faint. If the patient faints on a tilt test, which may last 20 to 35 minutes, uh, they will be able to say when they recover, whether what happened to them before they lost consciousness was the same as has happened in a spontaneous attack. And if they say, yes, this is exactly what happens to me, then we have made a diagnosis. Now this, this is important in the sense that we've made a diagnosis. It's also important that the patient fully understands that a diagnosis has been made because they've suffered something exactly the same as they suffered before. And uh, very often patients have seen many doctors before they get to Boone or to me or whoever and no diagnosis has been made. So th this adds to the, to the mental stress of the patient. And when they find that the symptoms have been reproduced by the test, they feel much more confident. So it has that reassurance quality in making the diagnosis. Further, if they haven't paid much attention to what happens before they faint, they will on a tilt test because they're, I mean, they're told that they may faint. So they're looking out for this. And in the clinical circumstances, not like in the pub, for example, they've only got this to pay attention to. So they realize, oh, I feel a bit dizzy. I feel a bit nauseated. I'm sweating. Uh, such things happen before fainting. And they, they learn better what the warning symptoms are so they can then employ the counter pressure maneuvers better. 
So it has an educational value as well as a reassurance value, as well as a diagnostic value. Uh, tilt testing has been much criticized because they say they're false positives. Well, they are, but they're not many. And it's entirely possible that all we're doing with a false positive is exposing the tendency to faint, which hasn't yet happened to that patient. They say there are false negatives. Well, I, I've kind of alluded to this in that tilt testing is best for the patients who faint when they're upright. And some who faint without being upright may not be positive. So yes, there are false negatives too, but these are quite small numbers as well. And uh, no medical test is perfect. And we talk about sensitivity and specificity and those scientific uh, aspects of tilt testing are as good as many medical tests which are highly respected. It's just that I think doctors generally don't like tilt testing because it takes such a lot of time. I mean, 35 minutes for a test. Is, um, even a coronary angiogram can be done in five. Uh, so 35 is a lot. And they don't want to bother with it. But Boone and I do, because we see its value. And that value will not go away. There's nothing which can replace tilt testing at the moment. So can I add to that, Trudy, that in the uh, more, more recent experience, um, I, I'll, just, I'll just qualify this to say that I took over the um, tilt testing service from, from, from Richard uh, himself when I took over the syncope lead at Imperial. And he left quite a nice uh, uh, two, two nurses who taught me everything I know about tilt testing. And key to this is the um, approach in which the patient education and communication of information uh, was in itself a strong therapeutic maneuver. And more and more, as I go on in um, my clinical service in syncope, the patients who come to me, particularly if they've been seen far and wide by many different uh, consultants without a clarity of diagnosis, uh, often have had it said to them that they do have a diagnosis of syncope, which is vasovagal in origin, but still they don't really get it. And oftentimes the tilt table recognition of pre-syncope, that is the symptoms of uh, lightheadedness, dizziness, nausea, and the, the, less, the, the very important but less recognized chest pain, palpitations, and rising feeling of anxiety or doom, which leads so many other doctors to, to label them as a patient with a panic attack. And the doctor has asked me to take some antidepressants or some beta blockers because I'm just panicking. But I know I'm not panicking, Doc, because I really feel it. There's no reason for me to feel like that. I'm a calm person. And after years of being told that they have panic attacks, they, they genuinely get this psyche in a state where you do amplify the symptoms when it starts. Because you so want not to have the symptom, and yet when it starts, you then have the panic attack that, that the doctor has labeled you with. So the idea of a tilt and the idea that we can share the data with the patients, i.e. what happens to your blood pressure, your heart rate, and the idea that you are triggering a fright or flight response that is so responsible for your constellation of unexplained symptoms, which includes the chest pain, palpitations, nausea, sweatiness, and the impending sense of panic or doom, is very, very helpful for patients because they see there on the tilt that they're not in a difficult argument or a frightening situation. They are being tilted and yet that tilt itself has reproduced the entirety of their symptoms. Now, when you take that and explain that to them and say, look, you don't have a panic attack syndrome. You don't have anxiety. They really embrace that diagnosis and then they can believe that actually fluid and salt because you've demonstrated to them the clear mechanism they then believe that fluid and salt may then work and so i'm more likely to adhere so education comes 
at a cost to us, which is taking some time off at the tilt table test. But the value that it brings to patient in accepting the diagnosis and understanding, but then more importantly, in motivating themselves to apply the therapeutic strategies, which actually, to be fair, has been repeated to them many, many times in the past, but now they get it. They stick now and they improve. And therefore, the therapeutic uh, tilt test is what I would label it. Uh, 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 the value of the tilt test for somebody like me, and I'm a decent diagnostician from the history, 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 as we talked about earlier on, but the value of tilting really comes in the communication of education to the patient and to empower them to, uh, to then take the actions to, to, to make a difference in their symptoms. I totally agree with you. An, an informed patient, a patient that's been educated about their condition from an understanding doctor, and it may take 35 minutes plus for a tilt test but if you think some of the patients when they eventually get to you have spent months or years seeing other doctors if only they've seen doctors like uh, the two of you it could be much quicker with the, with the tilt test confirming what they're going through um, yes history 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 is absolutely paramount but for a patient to go away better understanding what is happening to them better understand what they can do to help manage their condition is a very happy patient who can get on with leading their life safe in the knowledge of what they're suffering is unpleasant but in the majority of cases is not life-threatening and as you say they're more likely to adhere to drinking more water salt etc so i would like to thank you both Professor Sutton and Professor Lim uh, for giving up your time today to spend, to reach tens of thousands of patients through these educational videos. Thank you so much and thank you for your continued support as a STARS Medical Advisory Committee member. Thank you both. Thank you, thank Judy. You.